Boy is a young, talented legend. Um, who didn't know what he had. The biggest thing I ever wanted to do in life was sing like you in high school, bro. <laughs> I'm schooly, schoolboy, skater, West Side legend. I don't know if it hit me like it's supposed to hit me. You know, uh, they'll love you for 24 hours and they'll hate you the next day. Girl Diana, we're back with Full Soul Girl, and I'm here with Manny Akio and Schooly SB, Mr. SB, six times. Say it six times. Okay, okay. I feel like the introduction wasn't good enough, though. You you are a legend, literally in these streets. Uh, well, okay. Well, we'll start it over. Oh, um, yeah. Hi, literally. I'm SB. I'm Schooly, schoolboy, skater, uh, West Side legend. Uh, young go. Atlanta, Mr. Georgia, whatever you want to call me, because I have many names, Black many John hats. Gotti. Yeah, Black John Gotti is one of the one of the legendary ones too. No doubt, man. The biggest thing I ever wanted to do in life was sing like you in high school, bro. <laughs> I tried that shit so hard, bro. I'm talking about in the mirror, bent up, hat and everything, trying to get it down. I could never really got down. You feel me? I'm talking about you, I like dining in places where I only but you know I'm trying. You know how hard, you know you how hard that is for some people to say? What, to admit that? Yeah, what you the just truth? said. Yeah. Man, well, you know how many niggas want to sing like school growing That's up? Hard. I fuck with that. I fuck with that. Real I appreciate shit. that game. So how did you know that you was talented at a young age, bro? Um to tell you the truth, I used to wanna get like a reaction from uh random people. So anybody that came over <clears throat> to mom's house or if I was with my daddy, whoever, we went around, you know, I'm trying to, you know, just like hum, hum or I'm rapping. I was actually rapping first, you know what mm -hmm. I'm saying, before I found out I could keep a hold a tune. So it was like uh, my dad can sing. So it was like I kind of always wanted to be my dad. Like still to this day, I like want to be like the man that he that he is, that he became, and just that he is. When I was before I was born and after I was born, you know, like he was a real stand up guy. So it was like I wanted to do everything he did. But the rapping, it was just me watching Wayne, like Tip, like you know, just. But I wanted to be like Wayne. It was just I wanted to be Wayne. Like this, I, my perfect life was just. I don't know. That's why I grew my hair. For Wayne? Yeah, that's why I that's grew my hair. I, it, like, my hair was one of those things, like, in life, uh, I wonder if I can do that. Uh, I wonder if I can pull that off. Because um, my mom used to always, my dad, not my mom, my dad used to always make me cut my hair off when I grew it out. Yeah. My mom, then my, my sister wanted me to have the long hair, too. So, like, it was like, mom, but I kind of grew my hair, like, I want, I want dreads. I want long hair like 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 Wayne. And I just did it. And I can't believe I did it. I just kept going, you know. I don't know how long I'm going to let it get. Man, that's crazy. I saw somebody on TikTok. They were standing on top of like a, a, a shed building and their hair was hanging down to the ground still. Standing on the roof of the shed building. That shit got to hurt. Though, that was bro. overseas though. Like, but he was, his hair... Dreads down to the ground from the top of the building. No, that nigga back hurt. It <laughs> hurt. What? Everything, literally. Got to. Yeah, because this, this get on my nerve. This get on my nerve. I don't want to wet it every time I get in the shower. I got to put it up. Uh, it'll make you hot. Yeah. Uh, I'm I'm laying on it when I'm like this. Um, sitting on something different than this chair. Like, I, I'll be laying on it. I'll try to put my head up. I'm pulling my hair. Yeah. It's, uh, heavy. But I don't, I don't like for people to cut their hair though. It's wow. crazy. I wouldn't. I don't. I don't know. I may clip my hair once it get a certain length, but I wouldn't. I don't know if I ever cut it. Cut it all off. Yeah, I don't know if I ever do that. Why? Why did I do it? Why did I? Yeah. Why it? you started? Yeah, I feel what you mean. I feel what you mean. But I don't think it's nothing wrong with starting over. But I don't want. I don't think I want to. I didn't like my head. Is that the reason why you kind of let it grow out? Yeah. 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 Yeah, I didn't like I didn't like my shape of my head like with a low cut. So like it was, 
<laughs> now I want to see a picture of you when you were younger with the low cut. Like There's so this. many of them. I'm <laughs> so glad. I'm, I'm like, bro, yes. bro I had so many hairstyles <laughs> got them coming yes. up. Bro. The little was, dash with the shit in the front. That's what's crazy. The peewee <laughs> with the tail, the peewee was to hide the hump. <laughs> like the the hit like the knot like this joint right here yeah. back here in the middle like my head like like a peanut you feel me so it's like the this was it went up some so it kind of hid that if I had, held my head up so it's like my head was regular and you went blue with that motherfucker yeah I had to put the blue I got that from you know that was around the the, the uh, Wiz Khalifa era the way yeah, yeah. when he came through with the blind patch you know. I was down there ordering all the Taylor Gang clothes and shit off the internet. Yeah, I, he had a big influence on on me then too. So I I put on put the blue in my head. Real spill. That's for the cuz. You feel me? How would you describe being a motherfucking superstar in middle school, bro? Like that shit kind of abnormal. You know what I'm saying? It was. It was or actually, early high, high school. It was high. Yeah. Um. Shit felt like middle school, goddamn. You yeah, might bu- you might it, blew it, up in the summer going it, to high it school. It was. That's what it was. <laughs> That's what it was. Like it, was, it literally was. Um, uh, I don't know if it. I don't know if it. I don't know if it hit me like it's supposed to hit me. You know, because mm. uh, I didn't look at it like that. Um, I didn't know what I was. I didn't know what we were. Um, I didn't know how many listeners we had, you know. Um, so I wasn't aware to 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 be able to tell you like how it like really felt for that to go on. Mm-hmm. But for the most part I kinda I kinda was a try to be a regular person. You know, um I think anybody from my I wouldn't just say childhood, just from my high school times those four years uh would tell you I was I was like I I was like a regular student I tried my my best to be like a regular student but it was um I wanted to be a rich kid yeah. so so eighth grade while I'm going to the bus stop I'm seeing Caleb them mm. you know at the top of the hill every day so I start hanging with them eighth grade because I wanted to hang with them you know mm. what I'm saying so so it was by the end of the end of the year, so that's why I said, you're right. Yeah, 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 It was the summer, so during that summer, Caleb took me, Caleb himself, uh, took me everywhere that they were going. They were already in high school, so mm-hmm. he took me to all the high school parties, all the senior nights, all the, the. this was why school was going on, too. Yeah. Going toward the end of the year, so he took me to all, everything that the high school was going to, so that next year, I, you know, I just begged my, my daddy, to let me go to Doug, where they were going. Yeah. Um, and I got what I wished for, and it was like. Hey, Doug, pipe Doug. First day I got the first day I got to school, everybody knew my name, schoolboy. Everybody knew my name already because I had been hanging with these same people. All of these same people in these hallways. I'd never been in these hallways, but I've been hanging with them like I know them, like they know me. Type shit. Every weekend from the, the whole summer. Yeah. From the end of the year last year to the whole summer up until now, I've been around these people. So, like, they like, school boy, school boy, what's up? I ain't know you going to come here. Huh? <laughs> Everybody. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. it was, was, was kind of like I was spoiled into it. You know what I'm saying? I yeah. kind of got it. I kind of got a good hand of it. Okay, so with you saying that, for the new generation coming up that don't know, you started a whole wave. Like, you started a whole wave of singing and stuff like that. Who is Schoolboy for the people that don't know, the new generation? A uh, member of the Rich Kids, uh, Schoolboy is um, the the young, talented legend uh, who didn't know what he had, uh, all sisters, no brothers, only boy, the baby in the family. Um, very family orientated. Yeah. Uh, graduated on time from high school. Could have went to college. Didn't go because rich kids was popping. You feel me? No facts. facts. Uh, we were off the meat racks. You feel me? A uh, couple of our first shows were. Uh, that's why I say I'm spoiled into the game because of just one of these exact reasons. Uh, 
probably like our third show in real life. Rich Kids, like our, our first show, no, our second show was at Crucial. That was yeah. the first like adult uh, scenery. Uh, before that, it was just, you know, like that's why I said second. Because first, we did it so many times, but I only counted as as first because it was like the skating ring, the bowling alley. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Like that was teens, straight teens. Uh, our, our, our second, like real big show, crowd already there. Grown people, we do not supposed to be in this club. Come in there and it's, it's flashing lights. They're, they're from the stage all the way to the back of the club, mm. like packed out, crucial. Yeah. We go, they know the song already. What's up? I go up there like I supposed to be in there. Yeah, I'm on the stage. Like I know they got the, they still got a video on the on the internet yeah, right now to this day. So, um, come out of there like Derek. Derek like Derek was saying we couldn't come in. Tip got us to get in there. You know, like he's standing at the back. He's like let them in, let them do their thing, and then we gonna, they gonna leave. Boom, we go up there. Boom, I be down. They put us right out of there. <laughs> Swear to God, they weren't about to lose no license behind us. So Derek got us right up out of there when we finished. Our third show was Tip's Farewell Concert. It filled up Phillips Arena. Yeah. When we came on that stage, it's like, it was like, that was a different life for me. So that kind of, that kind of fucked me up. Uh, sorry for my language. It kind of like messed me up. Because I, I kind of like have this this phobia with small crowds now, because I began with yeah you know a, a arena club full full like so I have a thing I get nervous I still get nervous I still get nervous before my own concert if it's my concert like my concert not me coming out somebody bringing me out at their big concert like I'm used to that I'm just you know what I'm saying so like. Even though I've had concerts, I still get nervous to this day if I have a schooly concert. Like the two I just had, I was nervous before them. I'm nervous before every one of my concerts. Um, and I would say I would get nervous with a smaller crowd of people or a smaller room of people before I get nervous in an arena mm. or a dome or, you know, like a festival. Um, <clears throat> basically, basically that's the only reason I feel like I was spoiled into, it, you know what I'm saying? Cause it, that's how it came so fast for, for, for us. Um, and I didn't know what I was, man. I didn't know, I didn't know what I was becoming or what I had or what I was doing. You know, like I just know I was doing it and I was, I'm like, I'm still doing, I was doing what I love. I'm, I'm, bro, I made I made more than half of that shit on my grandma's sofa in one mm. bedroom. Bro, I stayed in the living room. I grew up, I stayed in the living room that whole high school time, like before 11, end of 11th grade, 12th grade. I was in my grandma's one bedroom apartment. How was y'all recording all that shit? Oh, uh, first then. first joints, like What's Up, Pond of Them. Uh, well, What's Up? Um, K rap, shout out to K rap. Uh, we was in his basement. Mm. Went to his basement. So after school days, like a uh, summer, then the after school days when I first started high school, we just going to K rap house doing songs, you know. And that's actually when I found out I could hold a note when I did the What's Up joint. Yeah. Um, I kind of was a real writer then back then, like I was on my. I was on my Wayne shit, like I'm telling y'all, like I was, I wanted to be shorty, like the hair tied back like this, you know what I'm saying? The tank top, the muscle, you know what I'm saying? I'm writing, you know what I'm saying? I'm reading off the joint while he, just going crazy. Like it just, <laughs> it's, all um, that, that yes, bitch. literally yeah. bro. Like if, if, if I could have got recorded every time I was doing a song, like that would have been like, he want to be like Wayne bad. Like in the, I'm, I was doing all that, like in how he was on um, in the basement. Yeah, you remember that? When yeah, he went crazy in there. Like that's, that's, that's how I wanted to be in the booth. That's how I pictured myself in the booth all the time. So how did hundred dollar autograph come up, bro? 
Oh, man, Thug. Oh, Shout out to yeah. Thug, man. Boy, I'm free, talking about, bro, uh, everybody wanted to hit that Free shit, slime, bro. man. Um, free Thug, man. We was, that, that's, that's my man. So, uh, we was, we was tight. Uh, we was tight. You know, I was listening to, I was listening to Thug uh, on release, like, before he came out. Like, the hood was, you feel me? Yeah. Everybody was listening to him, like, um. You know, I used to hang with Teezy, you know what I'm saying? So, like, it was, like, we was just, that's what we was listening to, you know what I'm saying? So, on release, Teezy, Thug, um, me, um, everybody from the South, Ralph, them, you know what I'm saying? It was, that was like, that kind of, like, became my surroundings, mm. kind of, you know what I'm saying? And it was like, I was, like, the only blue nigga over there with in the red section, yeah, you feel yeah. me? And it was love. It's just, it's always been love. So, um, and Thug, like, man, like, I used to pick him up. He used to pick me up. Like, it's like, for real, like, when neither of us got a car just of our own, like, I'm picking him up. I'm coming to Cleveland, pick him up. He come to pick me up. We leaving raps on each other's answer machine. Like, this was my dog. I, I wanted him to come out more than he wanted to come out. Type shit like this was in real life. I ain't scared to say that either. Like it was like literally like we used to call, and if one of us answer, we'll be done told each other like, "Don't answer. I'm trying to leave someone answering." <laughs> raps these real That's just real raps yeah. like real raps on the answer machine like that shit was just we, and we used to leave raps on our answer machine like verses just. It just, you know, like, that was my, that was my dog. And we just, that was one of many. That was one of many. And that was just one of those that just went crazy. Um, Like that Crucial. Mm. Crucial. Uh, Crucial broke a lot of records. Okay. Uh, shout out to Crucial. Crucial broke a lot of records. And, and that was like one of those, like, peon. Um, so like, like, $100. Thug, them, you know, it's it was the days where section in the club like we sectioned off without having sections you get what I'm saying mm -hmm. like it's 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 the south over there like Cleveland over there um you got Bankhead over here club on Bankhead you got Born Home over here Bankhead next to them all of them together you hear me you got you got Etheridge you got you got uh you got Camelton coming over here you got um Simpson Pulling up like we had, we, it was sex. Everything was sectioned off. So this just this coming from them times. Like I just I remember this shit vividly. You know, just everybody in the club. So thug them, they already known for getting on stage and and performing. You know what I'm saying? We rich kids, we already known for getting on stage and performing. Like they they like you said, they love me already. Like and the hood love thug at this point already. You know what I'm saying? So when they heard the song us together when they heard it come on like this is real life like I think they got this video too on um on the internet me and Thug on stage in Crucial mm -hmm. um when they heard the song come on it was like they they was in the studio the whole club it was like they was in the studio and they knew the song already they were waiting on us to perform it. Boom. yeah that's hard like it was crazy that was how that's exactly how Peon was with Boot like when we did the Rich Kid Money Savage thing like it was like they knew they used to just I don't know, bro. You ain't have to get leaked. If something had to get leaked, yeah. it was, like, if it was hard, they was on it. You yeah. feel me? Like, that's what broke us, the streets. You feel me? Yeah. So, I, I always felt like that. You know what I'm saying? So, how has it been being in this industry, you know? I literally, it's like my first year doing this industry stuff. And everybody always says the industry is very fake, you know? And I see it. So, how have you dealt with it while you were just the, in the beginning of your high school career you're still a kid and you're still in it you know how do you how have you dealt with it mm -hmm. um it's tricky um I will give them that it's fake I will give them that it's fake um I, I don't when it comes to like advice I hate giving it you know because I don't feel like I like I I'm a listener I'm a big listener. I may talk, you know what I'm saying, but I, I'm 
I take heed in whatever I hear, you know, like, and I dissect things, you know, just to see if they're true, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I don't, I don't like giving advice because I don't want to give no bad advice, you feel me? Mm -hmm. um, but the game is tricky. It's very tricky. Um, one thing I can just tell you or tell whoever, um, go for what you know, you know, um, Stand ten toes down on it. Um, this is a uh, when I say tricky. Uh, they'll love you for twenty four hours, and they'll hate you the next day. And it'll it it'll it could feel like a lifetime. It could feel like it's taking a lifetime to get that same twenty four hours back once you lose it or once you feel like you've lost it. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and I'm just saying this from experience. Um, not saying I feel like I've lost it or anything. It's just I, I, I know I felt that flame before. You feel me? I, I know I felt that flame up under my ass, up under my feet, and I had to keep, you know what I'm saying? Like, so they'll love you one day and one day they won't, you know what I'm saying? So it's like if they catch on to you, you know what I'm saying? Like, and you figure out, it, that's what I feel like this game is. It's all something for us to figure out. We all trying to figure it out if we if we got it or what it is that they like from us. You feel me? That's how I look at it. Um, so like it's just, well, if you if you catch them and you figure out what they like from you, you just stick to it. You know what I'm saying? And you you stay on it. Um, cause it's it's all type of artists, it's all type of music, it's all type of speeds of music that people like is different you know what i'm saying whatever this crowd of people don't like this crowd of people may love and they might mosh pit over it you know what i'm saying but this crowd right here is booing you get what i'm saying it's 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 different like so it it'll 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 scar you cuz it 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 can hurt but it can also feel good but it can hurt more than it feels good I don't know how to explain it, you know what I'm saying? I don't mm -hmm. want to just get to talking in circles, but you know, it's the game is you be ready for it, basically. You know, you be ready. And I don't know how to tell you to be ready, just brace yourself. Thanks. Um, what about emotionally, you know? Um, have you ever felt like you've been sold a lie to? You know, like, hey, we're gonna do this or yo, let's do this and let's do that, you know? How do you know when it's real, how you know when it's fake? Is there, or is it just like an like I just know it, I just sense it type of person? I definitely been lied to a lot uh, in this game, um, in life. Here, you know, that's why I said go for what you know. Um, but emotionally, this is something I love. This is not like a. That's why I feel like I'm just I'm just different because like. Even though I know this is this is a bag, you feel me? It's I didn't know that at first. I just knew I wanted to be on that screen or just in front of somebody performing and showing them what I got. And I didn't know that it was about a bag then, so it was like I still love it the same way now. So it's like it's my passion for real. Uh, I don't feel like it. I don't. This is just me personally still. I don't feel like I can do anything else in life better or to the extent or give it the same effort that I that I give music. You know what I'm saying? I think this is my This is my gift in life, eh? You remember they said that on paid in full? Yeah. <laughs> I ace told um how Mitch told Ace, like I think that's my gift in life. I think this is my gift in life. Doing music. How did the lady rich kids come about? School and school. Uh, they, we were all around each other the same way in school. Um, basically, it was it was it kind of like started like damn near like all the girls. Those damn near and lady rich kids like the the, the the original original like when we were just before the rap type shit. They were like. All the rich kid girlfriends, uh, except for me. You know what I'm saying? Like yeah. I didn't, I didn't, I didn't have one. Like in the original, then 
the younger generation, like like my age, you feel what I'm saying, came and and they they were all they started rapping. Lady the rich kid rapping. You feel what I'm saying? And they just kept it going. That's so real. And we so we had the rich kids and we had L R K. So it was like so many, so many different groups. Started having girl groups, like yeah. like like guy groups that was yeah. already in the city. Started oh, having like, the lady, yeah, the lady. Uh, that was like the theme of, them, of the city at one like, point. Was, yeah. yeah, you know what I'm saying. So it was like we had ours. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Rich kids had lady rich kids. You know yeah. what I'm saying. Um, yeah, it's a lot of crews back then. YC, lady rich kid, YD. Like, ooh, we we had a lot of crew that was that was like fucking with us. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like a lot of crew that was fucking with us. Yeah, spill. So so now that we here today, we done went through all the history, but you still here, you know what I mean? That's the blessing of it all. Yeah. You're still here putting out music. You still here getting your flowers. People still here loving to hear what you putting out today. Oh, yeah, God is you? the greatest. No cow. Nigga, you one of the greatest. God is the greatest. No cow. Shout out God too. He got me here. <laughs> no cow. He got me here, man. Real spill, man. So what do you feel like looking back after all these years still putting out great music that you contributed to this industry? Uh, that I didn't fail. That's kind of like I'll motivation. That. That's like motivation to me, uh, that I make timeless music, basically. You feel me? Uh because it's like you could you we can go to a club. Tonight, and they might turn on like five, six rich kids songs, uh, damn near an album back to back to back to back to back. Might spend some new shit. And the club is gonna still go crazy. Like back yeah. in the day, it's damn near like a reunion for them. You know what I'm saying? And it's like, it's damn near 15 years, mm -hmm. you know, 10 plus years. You know what I'm saying? And they still the same way. And I'm grateful for that. I'm. Like, I'm so grateful. I'm grateful that I can't even still be acknowledged, you know what I'm saying? Uh, let alone with just my new music or what I'm doing today, it's just period, you know what I'm saying? Like y'all call me a legend, like that, I I take heed into that, like it don't go over my head. I, I you know, like, I thank y'all for that, you feel me? And I, I, I greatly appreciative. Very, 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 you know what I'm saying? Yes, so we talked about new music. Um, now you have more of an R and B. You're bringing out more emotional music. What made you want to decide? I'm like, all right, I'm gonna drop two projects. One is gonna be for the ladies, and the other one is gonna be, you know, who we know, Schoolie right now. Mm -hmm. What made you want to do that? Uh, I've never been able to pick. Mm. Ever since I figured out that I got both of them, you feel me? I've never been able to just say, I'm going to just do this. You feel what I'm saying? Because I'm, I'm, you know, if it's up to me, you know, you know, you always got a team that's behind, like, this is the smart move. Like, this is smarter. Like, this is what. And then they go to your logistics. You know what I'm saying? Like, they want to hear. It. But it's, it's like, I want to let the people choose if I have to choose um, to do R&B or rap or, like, why can't I just do both? You know what I'm saying? But. Um, this was kind of like giving them an ultimatum, mm -hmm. giving them like a choice. You know what I'm saying? Like, what do, you, which one y'all like better? You know. So I put out the the, the fast, the, the the jump around, the rap, the hip hop. You know, first. You know what I'm saying? With this bus behind us. Um. Uh, I kind of had a concert, kind of on my Marty McFly, uh, Teen Wolf, uh. You know, get together. You mm -hmm. feel me? Uh, I'm on top of the bus performing. Uh, I take them through my neighborhood. Um, and I pull up to, like, uh, an area that we got set up or the park. And they get off. And I get on top of the bus and I perform. You know what I'm saying? For them. Uh, and I waited, like, what? I say, like, 20 days. And then I dropped the R&B side. And I had something for like the grown and sexy you know like grown man grown woman you know put on your white put on your heels um come chill come relax let me sing to you type you know and i did that on a rooftop all white both both of the uh 
venues or both of the situations I did was in Atlanta. And they were I was surprised still. Like 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 I said, like I was surprised still like for the come out. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, damn, this many this many people still like interested in hearing me sing and this many people still interested in seeing me perform, you know, like on a scale of, to buy some tickets for it, you feel what I'm saying? Like I just, I be grateful for that, like that type of shit. Like I'm, yeah. I'm just grateful. Like so that's that be like fuel to my fire. That be motivation. That keep me going. That's why. Yeah. That's like damn near the reason I keep keep pushing. Yeah, it's real. You know what I'm saying? What can you say from being a child star to being a grown man? You had to make that transition and be more vulnerable and say things that people can relate to as you were an adult. Now you know what I mean. So how hard was it for you to put more emotion and put more real life into your music as you got older? I wouldn't say it was hard at all. Um, I basically my music is just life. Uh, I I barely I barely rap about imagination. You feel me? Um, I barely rap about imagination unless I'm like on some on some like smooth talking to a woman yeah. type record. Like, but I don't rap about imagination. Like everything. Really, like, literally, you can go to all my lyrics, go through all my songs, whether it was Rich Kids, all the way up to me being solo, is literally what I've seen, what I've experienced, what I've heard, what I've watched. Um, just life being lived, and I'm just letting it out. I'm just telling you what I've been through. You feel me? Um, and I feel like that, that, just, that has helped me, and that's a great way to uh find a topic when you use real life use real life i think that's a great topic to go off of if you can't find anything you feel yeah. and that's what that's what i do period you know i rap about just or sing about you know something that i've been through or something that i've seen somebody else go through i felt with them or or I, a way I really really just felt when I was uncomfortable or I was comfortable as hell like whatever, it was real. Okay, uh, describe your okay so for your R and B. You have a dinosaur. Describe that cover art for me. Uh, the dinosaur uh, is it's like a, a emblem. It's like um, it's like a logo. It's it's like it's me. Um, I picked the dinosaur because it's. it's they're one of a kind. Uh, they're extinct right now, but that, to a certain extent, it's like they don't make them anymore. You feel me? Uh, I don't feel like I'm gonna be made anymore. I feel like I'm the last me. I feel like I'm the last. You know what I'm saying? Like of my whatever breed. You feel what I'm saying? Um, and it was like the, you know, I was on the blue thing. I'm on the blue thing, so it's like. Dinosaurs bleed blue even when the oxygen hit to our knowledge. You know what I'm saying? Even when oxygen hit their blood, outside uh dinosaurs bleed blue. I think it's probably only one animal, I think it's probably like a crab in the sea or something like that that still does the same thing. But it's like it's one of a kind, you know what I'm saying? It's like the biggest. Um there's a whole big history about dinosaurs, you know what I'm saying? So it's like, I feel like I'm that big, you know what I'm saying? Take up. So it's called Sleeping Giant. Well, how did the name come about? Um, Sleeping Giant, I felt like, like I said about the dinosaur, uh, I'm a big, I kind of I kind of figured out I'm a big deal. Uh, I figured out I'm I'm somebody in the game. Um, I hadn't dropped in three years. I was working, dropped singles, but I hadn't dropped a body of work in three years, uh, and it was like. I was a sleeping giant. I was calling myself the dinosaur, so it was like I'm 
a sleeping giant. And on top of that, um, kind of like me saying that the gang's been sleeping on me. You know what I'm saying? So once I wake up, it's time to wake them up. I did it, I did it, I did it.